Yo, what's up everybody? We are currently at the Auckland Domestic Airport waiting for our flight. We are headed over to Christchurch and we're going to be going on a big trip around the upper half of the South Island. Yeah, we just grabbed a bite to eat from Best Ugly Bagel, who do make the best bagels in Auckland, they like do. I gotta say. <laughs> yeah, so our uh, breakfast set and we're about to wait for our plane very soon. See you guys there. One and a half hours later and we have arrived in Christchurch. That's right, we're going to go pick up our rental car now. And yeah. yeah, I booked it through Snap Rentals again. Uh, well, it always ends up the best price, so I just go with them. <laughs> and we've got a Toyota Corolla, so I need to call them and we need to wait somewhere, so we need to find out where that is. <laughs> it's also apparently nine degrees at the moment, so I'm glad I've got this massive ass warm jacket. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, door just opened over there, and I can feel that it's a lot colder here than it was it back in Auckland. <laughs> Checked in and we are ready to go. We're gonna go to our Airbnb first. But here is our car for the next nine days. A nice Toyota Corolla. <laughs> Cost us $479.30. That's with full insurance, so we don't have to worry about you know damaging it while we're on the road. Peter's a good driver, so yeah, it's yeah. okay. <laughs> so far, no crashes. Okay, so we're just gonna get loaded and we're off. Okay, just brought all the stuff from the car, but we won't full up the Airbnb yet until Yen's given us a bit of a tour. Welcome in. This is Morris's Airbnb, and it's so nice. He left us on the oil column heater, so it's all so much warmer in here. Ah, oh, it's gorgeous. So yeah, this is a very compact space, as you can see. It is nice and tidy and clean, though. So that's all that we need. It's got kettle, toaster, little mini fridge and a table which is perfect for us and the bathroom is on this side here also very spacious and clean it's almost the size of like the bedroom <laughs> <laughs> very spacious bathroom it is 96 dollars a night we're just here for the one night so it is perfect for us and the location is great too it was only about less than 10 minutes drive from the, uh, airport. the airport yeah and it's also close to supermarkets and restaurants and all that too so, so we're gonna go out and get ourselves some food and yeah, the light's going down. It's only about four something. <laughs> I think we need a hurry. <laughs> We're a bit early for the restaurant and so we decided to take a little short stop at the Cathedral Square. Yeah, so we've been to Christchurch before and we have vlogged from here. You can check that out or link it somewhere up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, I've heard that they've done a little bit of work on the Cathedral and I can see it already. I can definitely see the oh, work wow, that they've they done. done a lot. So there was a massive earthquake um, a couple of years back in Christchurch for those who aren't from New Zealand and don't know. So it is nice to see that they have done quite a bit of work. And this is what the Cathedral used to look like before the Canterbury earthquakes. You staying warm there bud? I don't know what I was thinking wearing ripped jeans <laughs> coming to the South Island because that's the part that feels cold. <laughs> Thankfully got this so that's all nice and warm. So the restaurant that Peter found is called Rangoon Ruby, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, and it's Burmese food, which we've never had before, so we're quite excited to try it. It's pretty close by. Yeah, and hopefully it'll be open in a couple of minutes and we can head on over. We 
we were just talking to the nice waiter and apparently this is the only Burmese restaurant in the whole of New Zealand. No wonder we haven't seen it like anywhere else that we've traveled. I always like to find like the rare restaurants and go try yes, them. Yes, he does. So our dishes have arrived really quickly and apparently in Burmese tradition, you have smaller portions and you share them and you eat it with rice. So we have gotten five dishes in total and two of them have arrived already. This one is the... Nasin Ching. Nasin Ching. <laughs> I'm sorry if we're butchering this name. And this one was the... La Petop. <laughs> and it is a tea salad, so that should be quite interesting. So let's try the raw fish first, shall we? Mm. It is so yummy. You can definitely taste that super zesty lemon and it's salty as well. That tiny hint of the coriander is really nice with it. Um, if that is an indication of what's to come, I think we're in for a delicious meal. So this is the lepeto. Apparently this is a super famous dish and so we had to try it of course. Yes. It's pickled tea leaves under here, yes. which is really unique. I've never had that before. Mm. Oh. That oh, that is good. insane. In Chinese households, you'd often have pickled vegetables, pickled cabbage most commonly. And that reminds me of that, but it's a beautiful, subtle flavor. And it pairs so beautifully with all the nuts. Gives a little bit of crunch, a little bit of creaminess. And then you got the tartness and sourness from the pickled tea leaves. That is an absolute winner, guys. I also saw that there was soup on the menu. And since it's so cold, it's the perfect time to have it. This one is called Onohinye, and it is coconut and chicken soup. So there's some bits of chicken in there. I wonder if the coconut's just infused. So aromatic, you can definitely smell the coconutty goodness. Mm. How's that? Really yum. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of the lime just to see how that changes the flavor. Mm. It's really good with that lime juice in it too. So I'm gonna try the ngahim, which is a fish fillet, and it's been braised in tomato, chili, coriander, and tamarind sauce. These are great small size portions so that you can get quite a variety of flavors, which we always enjoy. Load it up with some of that sauce. Mm, I like that. It's quite um quite subtle for a curry flavor, but you can still taste the little spices that tamarind which is kind of tangy, a little bit salty and very tomatoey as well which is nice. The fish is also very fresh so delicious. When we were in Thailand, papaya salad, green papaya salad was one of our favorite things to eat so when we saw it on the menu had to go for it because it's pretty hard to even find papayas here in New Zealand. <laughs> so let's give this a try. That looks so good. Got your seal oh, of approval. <laughs> and it tastes so good as well. Oh, Does that it is taste incredible. like the Thailand one? It does taste a little bit different from the one in Thailand. The one in Thailand will have a lot of very pungent flavors, whereas this one is a little bit more balanced and you can taste the creaminess inside, which is a unique attribute to this salad. Time for the Jetta Onohim, which is the curry chicken in coconut cream. Okay, bite time. <laughs> That curry chicken is sensational, cooked to perfection. The meat has been treated so beautifully, it's so soft, it just falls in my mouth. Oh, I can smell the it The curry too. flavors are majestical. <laughs> what more can I say? Try this place out. Mess one of these. That was an absolutely fantastic meal. I'm so glad you found this place, Guy. Well yeah, done. it was awesome. <laughs> so delicious. It's kind of like a mix between I'd say Thai, Cambodian, and maybe Malaysian, but so unique and very delicious. Right now we're gonna head back to our Airbnb though, and we will continue this vlog tomorrow when we head over to Greymouth. See you guys tomorrow. <laughs> See you. Morning everyone, we've left our Airbnb. Thanks Morris for the great stay. We are on our way to a place called Castle Hill at the moment, which apparently has all these incredible rock formations. It's only four degrees outside at the moment, according to our car um, temperature gauge thing. And we are all layered up <laughs> and warm. We had a good hot shower in the morning. And yeah, we'll see you in a little bit.
Not only have we been treated to some amazing views on this drive this morning, but now that we've arrived here at Castle Hill, it is beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Like there's probably no way that we can show you how impressive the scale of these rocks are. But the Maori name of this place is called Kura Tafiti. And yeah, we're just walking along the access track now to get closer to the stones. I love that it's winter and there are some snowy peaks on the mountains surrounding us. And then these majestical limestone rocks yes, are moments. just beautiful. <laughs> to give you guys an idea of how cold it is today, check this out, that is ice. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a, slippery. Oh, that was really slippery. Oh my god. You careful. Oh. Oh. <laughs> careful. I'm careful. gonna I'm gonna hold your head. <laughs> that was not expected. This is how much of city folk we are. <laughs> found myself a little patch of sunlight where it's warm because the rest of the icy grass is freezing my feet off. <laughs> but yeah, these limestone rock formations are the water eroded remnants of limestone formed I think it was 30 to 40 million years ago when oh. much of present day New Zealand was still underwater. So even though these ancient rocks look pretty smooth from afar, when you get up close and touch them in person, they are actually pretty rough. And I'll show you guys this, this is really cool. This actually is all rocks, even though it looks like it's a river or something, because it's got all the yeah. ripples through it. And you can totally see why this is one of the most popular attractions here on the Great Alpine Highway. Definitely a must see. Good stuff off, eh? What do you reckon about that, huh? That was a lot of fun exploring around the rocks. Just had to be careful though with our footing because it was pretty icy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, stick to the tracks. Right now we are headed over to the... Devil's Punch Bowl Waterfall. Well, what a name. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that will be pretty awesome too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure whatever we're going to see on this drive is going to be awesome. That's uh, <laughs> Yeah. Meters, your destination will be on the left. We we're on our way to the waterfall, but we just had to stop and show you guys around. We're in the Arthur's Pass Scenic Lookout and it's beautiful over here. There are so many pretty mountains with snowy caps on the top. We're yeah. here in late May and we've really struck lucky with the lottery weather gods because uh, we've got a nice sunny day, but apparently in a couple of days time, it's going to start raining. So Hello. fingers crossed, we'll see how everything goes though. It's been an incredible drive over. Has been. roughly about a 10-ish minute drive from that Arthur's Pass Scenic Lookout. We've arrived at the Devil's Punch Bowl Waterfall and it is quite amazing. You can already see it just when you come out of the car park but we're going to take a walk to get closer to it which is meant to be about half an hour. But yeah, it is so frosty. There is so much ice on the grass. Look at this part. This is a sight that us northerners wouldn't see as much. <laughs> no, we don't really see this much at all. Look at all these ice. Oh my goodness. It's so pretty. I hope it comes out on the camera because it just looks like a winter wonderland here. I, I know we should be looking at the waterfall, but we're fascinated by like this <laughs> patch of ice. I really like some of the moss that's growing in this area. I don't know if it's the time of year or what, but there's some really interesting looking mushrooms that I've never seen before. And of course the moss is just super luscious right now. <laughs> Beautiful, I love moss. You and your moss. <laughs> I know. Not quite sure how these falls got their English name, but the Te Reo Maori name is Te Tautea or Hine Kakai. And that's because the long white threads of the intertwining water resembles flax, which is used in weaving garments. And Hine Kakai was an ancestress who was famous for weaving. It's 
So guys, that was such a nice walk. I think that was one of those occasions where the walk was just as beautiful as the waterfall. And we couldn't help ourselves coming into this icy area one more time to check out this ice formation. Yeah. Right now though, we are going to continue our drive onto Greymouth, which is where our Airbnb accommodation is for the night. Yeah, we're going to be staying there before we shoot off to explore a whole bunch more cool stuff yeah. tomorrow. Hopefully the weather holds out and cooperates with us so we can bring you tons of vlogs. But in the meantime, if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash the like and the subscribe button. <laughs> Drop us a comment, love hearing from you. Please help share our videos, that all helps us and we super appreciate it. Catch you next time. See ya. It's kind of sad for a while because I thought we'd do this entire trip without seeing a Kia, but then luckily we pulled off here and look what we found. He's being naughty, he's trying to attack this, these people's car. Kia's are really, really cool birds. They are the world's only alpine parrot. And we heard about one when we were, where was it last time? Milford Sound, I think, about how it locked one of the people in the toilet. <laughs> like a really <laughs> smart and really curious parrot.